Okay, so should we start? Um, uh, hi, folks. Uh, I'm Jin Zhao. Uh, today I will co present with uh, Praveen uh, Lohit, is not here. So, Praveen, do you want to? Uh, hi, folks. This is Praveen Tilamsati. We are excited to share our work from Twitter. Go ahead, Jin Zhao. Hi. So, um, at Twitter, uh, we have a complex law paper plan to handle data at a Twitter scale, which is about a four, a $3.4 to $4.1 trillion events per day. Um, we had been evolving this uh, law pipeline for over the past years. It is designed to be resilient, high scalable, and use resources efficiently. It, was, uh, it worked pretty well. However, because of the, the legacy architecture, it is still a batch law pipeline, pretty much HDFS centric. So for some time, we have been redesigning our architecture to serve the streaming user cases uh, uh, better. Uh, we have done lots of changes to our architecture. So today, uh, we are going to deep dive into our own law, law pipeline, share its pros and cons. Um, in the meantime, we want to describe uh, uh, into how the, uh, our new law pipeline works, how it, it could serve streaming cases better. So, um, to, so to, to start, uh, I'd like, like to share the skill. Um, as I said in the beginning, the event number is about 3.4 to 4.1 trillion events. And the data size before compression is about 10 petabytes today. And know that um, the traffic is still, still growing every year. Uh, it's, it's growing rapidly. So if we are going to build something, uh, something uh, uh, it, 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 it is definitely need to be scalable. So how is the architecture like? Um, uh, as shown in, uh, just, just for some people which are not familiar with the log ingestion system. So by the even here, we mean, um, a re, uh, we mean something like uh, as click info and like even tweet like even the info we uh, click them and put them in Swift format or JSON for format or protocol buffer format. Uh, then we send data to our log pipeline and the goal of the log pipeline is to deliver the data to HDFS in hourly format. So the data is, uh, is organized by uh, log categories. The log, uh, the log category is the equivalent concept of a topic in, in other systems. So um, after the log pipeline deliver data to HDFS, uh, as shown in the picture, uh, user might want to uh, assess the data from different systems by different uh, analytic tools. For example, they want to see the data uh, in production cluster, ad hoc cluster, code cluster, or Google Cloud Storage. So we have a replicate service to replicate it to, um, uh, to use a specified cluster, then user could consume it. So um, if we look into our architecture of low pipeline, it's pretty modularized. Uh, from a high level, we could, uh, it could be divided into five components. So first is a client. Um, the clients, uh, if, uh, if we want to collect the inter from outside of the data center, like uh, the OS client, Android client, uh, they will send the data uh, by RESTful API to our internal uh, service first. And if the event is uh, from our internal service, uh, like our timeline servers, uh, it will be sent. Uh, it, it will be sent to the uh, to, to to our long uh, client uh, subscribe daemon on node. On every node, we have a long running daemon process to collect to collect the events. Uh, of the uh, from the servers in the host. So um, uh, so uh, after the client even get the data, it will send data to our aggregation layer. We have a bunch of servers every data center. The goal of the aggregated layer is to possess the data as as soon as possible. And they will write it to HDFS because once the data is in 
the DFS is doable, it won't be lost. Then we have another layer called log processing to read the output of the ag aggregators and try to do something like a clean up of the crop records to format a conversion, like convert to parquet, and also do better compression, reduce those small files. So after the data is processed, we will write it back to HDFS again. Uh, now the data is already in the format the users want. It is ready to be delivered to users. But also, but as shown in the uh, above picture, users might want to access the data from different HDFS clusters or GCS. So we have a replicating service to merge the data from uh, all data centers and uh, deliver a whole data set to, to users. The user could uh, use a uh, leverage Presto uh, Spark to consume it. And the last com component is the uh, even the log management. So um, from a high level, it does two things. First is the metadata management. Uh, we have some polar category, uh, also per topic metadata, like the owner, the schema info. The second function of the log management is uh, to provide the, the data discovery uh, functionality. It will record where the data is stored, uh, how it's uh, segmented, is it based on hourly or uh, or a shorter, even shorter period, and the where it is stored, you know, some info like that. So we had been uh, running the, uh, the, all the all the log pipeline for years. We had learned a lot from it. Um, so for, for example, we learned that the modularization is a component. So in architecture, we, we keep each component uh, independent and pluggable. Uh, we had even you know replace our aggregation layer without any impact to to uh, any users or any servers, and uh, we make each component scale independently. Uh, they they don't have a deep tie. They just com uh, they just communi communicate by a, a simple protocol. Uh, we also learned that uh, in some scenario we want to share the resource to improve the utilization and the resiliency. But in the meantime, we want to we want the result to be isolated uh, between tier to control the blast radius. So um, what we have done is that we just divided the traffic into different tiers. Uh, inside the tier, we share the resource, but between the tiers, we make it totally isolated and scale independently. For example, we escape, we isolate our test traffic with the production traffic. And uh, uh, yeah, something like that. So the next thing I want to highlight is uh, the scalability is always a primary concern. The traffic grows every year and the traffic make everything hard. Like uh, it leads uh, to our HFS uh, uh, name node problem, the name limit, the small files problem. And also because the traffic is too, too big, it also, you know, just, uh, uh, casting lots of pressure to our network. So we also involved uh, some QS mechanism to handle it. Um, so another thing we learned is like, uh, is uh, that users make mistakes. Uh, you, it's hard, you, you, you couldn't imagine what you, you couldn't assume users always behave correctly. They might make, uh, you know, something uh, unexpected. For example, they might make a back in, incompatible schema changes, which is not accessible for the key. Um, we also learn a lot of things on debug, uh, debugability and some problem like long tail problem, DC fuel will support, but because of a time limit, I won't go to into the details. Um, but when we come into the new uh, law pipeline, we definitely want to take the lessons we learned into, uh, into it. So, um, so for the new law pipeline, we we are not going we we are not going to just totally abandon the the, the batch cases or our on-prem environment. Instead, we want to build a hybrid environment, which could uh, uh, integrate the, our on-prem clusters, on-prem uh, environment, seamlessly with our uh, cloud, and we want on-prem parity on cloud. Uh, we want uh, we wanted the new log pipeline could uh, could empower uh, 
most uh, users to try more streaming user cases. For example, the Google data flow on Google Cloud uh, and a big query, you know, real time query. But in the meantime, you know, we, we, we also want to search the batch user cases as well, like people use Spark, data flow, and then Presto. So another goal is about scalability, you know, like uh, we mentioned, uh, that uh, we, we, we want to build something which could uh, uh, be able to handle, handle the traffic and the, the traffic increase over the, the next years. We definitely don't want to build something and uh, do, a major re uh, do a major change, you know, just next year. Uh, the last thing I want to highlight is the cloud native and the PDP. Uh, in the new law pipeline, we want to leverage cloud native technologies as much as possible. Uh, we, 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 we are not trying to build thing, everything on our own. We want to leverage cloud uh, technologies, uh, you know, like the, the, there's uh, security uh, features and their uh, streaming community and like data flow. Um, the last thing is about the PDP. So PDP means, uh, here I mean private data protection. So at Twitter, this is always our top priority. Um, when we build a new law pipeline, we, uh, the, the private uh, data protection is uh, our uh, top concern. We have done lots of, work, uh, lots of work to define the permission model and the limit process, encryption, checksum, and something like that. So uh, next, I will uh, introduce how we build a law pipeline in GCP. GCP here meaning Google Cloud Platform. So before we go into go to the architecture, I would like to share the use cases from a high level. Um, on the cloud, uh, users could uh, send data from GKE. This is a very common use cases. But it's possible they, all, uh, they, uh, they might also send data from the virtual machines. Uh, they also could send data from some service functions, some cloud native uh, features like cloud function, Google API uh, uh, apps engine. And uh, from the consumer's perspective, uh, from high level, you know, it is uh, batch or streaming. For batch process, uh, we need to, to deliver the data to uh, process uh, storage uh, on Google Cloud. We will use GCS. Uh, we will deliver data to GCS, and the user could uh, do a, a batch processing uh, by, by, uh, by Spark, data flow, uh, or scouting. Uh, the second user case is stream processing. So for stream uh, processing, I guess uh, there are many use cases. User might want to consume the data directly from the subscriber storage from the PubSub system. Uh, and also they might want to see their data in BigQuery in real time. So for the new law pipeline, we, we want to, you know, just uh, uh, want to serve the cases from both the producer side and the consumer side uh, well. So here's the architecture we, we figured out. Um, it is also pretty modularized. Uh, from high level, it is uh, you know similar to uh, uh, to what we have on prem. So the first layer is about the uh, the client. We provide a unit unified client library which abstracts the backend uh, difference. We uh, we just disguise. We just uh, uh, this uh, we just uh, sh uh, shadow the difference between GCP and on prem. Uh, you know, thing like authentication, something like that. So the unified library on cloud, uh, it was sent to PubSub. The PubSub will be our aggregation layer. Uh, we will map every log category to go PubSub topic, um, but we will add a uh, uh, lots of rich metadata headers like the checksum info, the, the encoding info. So once the data in PubSub, ideally user could write a data flow job or spot job to consume it, uh, but um, we notice that uh, there are some uh, common use cases. You know, it's, it's, one is like uh, the Google Cloud storage. They want to want it there to be to do batch processing, and another ca case is like users want to see their data in BigQuery. So to better solve these these cases, instead of asking users to write their job on their own, we we we, we did the job for them. We provide a 
uh, uh, manage the environment to do uh, such things. Um, we call these uh, component processors. For example, we have the pops up uh, to Google Cloud Storage processor, the Google Cloud, Google Cloud to, to BigQuery stream uh, processors. Uh, we leverage the data flow to uh, uh, Google Cloud Computer Engine to do it. And we, the processors is, uh, is polar category, and we will have you know, thousands of processors. Uh, in order to management, we need a component. That, this is why we come up with the log processor schedulers. It manages these jobs, schedule it. Schedule it. Um, and to schedule these jobs, uh, the log processor needs some info, polar category info, like a schema info, also some meta info like owner. So, so here, data store comes, it stores such info. Um, once the, uh, on, on cloud, uh, we have various destinations, you know, the data clean, the big core GCS Druid. Now we are, we are using stream processors to, to process the data. Um, but uh, um, this is just on cloud. We, we also have on-prem on components. So we have a replicating service to, to play a glow of destinations to, to replicate between cloud and on-prem. And sometimes, you know, sometimes users might want to restate their data in BigQuery. They might want to load their data to go class or to BigQuery. So this is also uh, a function, uh, the, a rule we hope a replicating service to, uh, to play. Okay, so now I had introduced the architecture. Uh, from now on, I will hand over to my colleague Parvin. He will lead us to deep dive into each component and share how the big picture like when we come by on-prem and on-cloud. Thanks. So, Kevin, do you want to take it? you see my screen? Hey, Jinjo, can you see the screen? I I can see your screen now. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Jinjo, uh, for the uh, introduction of the log pipeline and uh, high-level components of the architecture. Uh, I have a bunch of slides to cover uh, component details of our architecture and tell how we do replication uh, between the sinks uh, in a batch way as well as streaming way and uh, conclude the talk. So let's get into the details of the how uh, we handle the processors. One of the components in the um, our log pipeline is the log processors where uh, we deploy a processor per flow, essentially per log category per sink. So let's say if I have a user data, add impressions, wants to be delivered to BigQuery and GCS we'll maintain two separate log processor for that particular log category, which is add impression. So uh, that means there is more than one processor to be uh, deployed for log category, and there are many such log categories. Uh, the log processor duty is to essentially deliver the data from PubSub to our respective sinks. Uh, so we have two kinds of log processors. Uh, first one is a streaming post processor, uh, where uh, you read data from PubSub and write it to the BigQuery. And uh, the users who want data to be available in uh, in uh, within a few seconds is what opt for this. Uh, as uh, Jinjo men mentioned in the initial set of slides, we want, even though we ask users, uh, even though we expect users to provide a correct schema and valid records, it's possible that uh, things can be uh, not as expected uh, when during the deployment. So it's possible that uh, you could receive a bad record and you don't want to mess up uh, uh, your BigQuery uh, schema. So when we find out that uh, uh, while uh, transforming the data from PubSub to uh, BigQuery, if we find any bad records, we write them and store them to a, a dead letter table so that if the number of such bad records beyond a threshold, uh, we can notify the customer teams and uh, they can look at the data and then um, re-ingest it back by modifying them. And uh, another thing that we, the duty of the processor is to do end-to-end checksum -end validation. Uh, the checksum itself is computed and added has a special header uh, at the at the right end, uh, at the very first end of receiving the uh, client, uh, the event from the client, uh, which is where in the client uh, 
library we uh, add a checksum as a special header just before writing to the sync uh, if, for example either bigquery or cloud storage we validate those checksums and if there is any any encoding done you decode and finally publish it to the uh, uh, your big bigquery uh, table and that, uh, with respect to batch processor uh, we support a couple of formats for users to choose uh, either it's a row based format or column format drift or parquet and that is something that user can configure at the time of provisioning a lock category uh, they can say i want this data to be available in a batch fashion with this kind of a format and this processor also does checksum validation uh, with respect to batching we also need to worry about how we maintain the metadata for those uh, uh, for those uh, uh, batch data uh, for example, we aggregate the batch data at hourly boundary and maintain metadata for every hour. Uh, for a given log category, we maintain uh, data is available at each log, each each and every hour. So it's possible that for a particular hour, there is no data coming in uh, from PubSub. At that time, we still need to create a metadata uh, equivalence for that hour. So to do that, we had dummy events into the uh, uh into the life cycle uh, into the processor so that uh, you had you still get at least one event per hour to handle the metadata operations and i'll discuss more about replication service etc in the next set of slides the next component i want to describe is how do we manage the log processors that i explained in the previous slide so you have more than one log processor per log category and also you have many such log categories that users can uh, uh, deploy. So what does processor scheduler does is that it does essentially does the lifecycle management of uh, these uh, uh, log processor jobs. Uh, ideally, uh, I mean, set of goals to goals for the, the scheduler is to provide a simple knobs for users to configure uh, so that they can choose whether they want data in stream way or batch way and uh, uh, what destinations that they want this data to be delivered. And we want this scheduler to be extendable uh, in a way that right now you see one or two processors that we support but it's uh, will in in future we plan to add ingestion to druid and other 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 things at that time we don't want to rewrite this layer so uh, it's good to have a job abstraction layer where we can add more set of jobs and scheduler is unaware of what kind of job it is running and uh, it it essentially uh, uh, maintains what jobs are running and if any changes are detected uh, uh, from the user configuration, the event controller will detect uh, uh, any changes that happen to configurations. And uh, if it is a new lock category, it will deploy a new job. If it is an existing lock category, it will pause the current one, stop it, uh, update the configs, and redeploy the, uh, redeploy the new job. So uh, that's at a high level, uh, job scheduler manages uh, uh, the uh, schedule, uh, scheduling option, uh, scheduling aspects of the log processor, and this whole experience we want it to be in a managed execution format. That means it should be a managed layer. User doesn't need to worry about these jobs. They all they care about is that I'm I'm sending data from my Twitter services. I want data to be available in these analytical syncs or uh, batch syncs, and uh, uh, this entire thing should be hidden. If a particular job is not uh, paused or not running we should be able to detect uh, what's going wrong and then uh, act accordingly so we have uh, metrics in this pro in this scheduler to detect those events and handle them and the next uh, component is client library uh, why do we need a client library we have separate set of implementation for uh, 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 our data center our twitter data center log pipeline and a new set of implementation in cloud environment for the users, they shouldn't be worrying about how uh, the data pipeline, or how logs are delivered, whether they are scribing from on-prem or cloud. Uh, the client library provides that abstraction to the user so that they just need to interact with a uh, log pipeline using simple APIs. And they don't need to worry about how routing is done and where the uh, how the events are traveled. And apart from that, uh, client library also provides a, a good set of uh, metrics for the user to, so that they can uh, visualize uh, how many events that they are sending across their microservices and uh, how many events finally they are receiving, what is the drop rate and whatnot. And uh, so we do want to, uh, from the previous learnings, we want to avoid bad data to be ingested into the log pipeline. Uh, to achieve that, uh, we added a static schema validation check so that if somebody makes a mistake of choosing a wrong schema for a 
uh, uh, for a different lock category, the uh, compile time asserts will take care of those. The library provides those enhancements. And also, this is the layer where we add all rich metadata and pluggable headers, where uh, we, uh, example, you can compute checksum, type of encryption that we are doing, type of encoding, um, and uh, any other internal metadata that we want to associate, we want to have it associated with a message. For example, what is the time at which the event was actually received to log, log, uh, log pipeline so that we can see end-to-end -end latency. So those kind of metadata can be added. And that metadata itself, it's forwarded to uh, al uh, forwarded along with the message throughout the uh, log pipeline. And uh, apart from that, uh, the another component is the state store, uh, which deals with schema management. Right now, we have a rudimentary implementation of managing schemas where we have a, a CI job which essentially uh, runs uh, regularly to look at set of changes that happened in the source repo and creates a jar from the schema and uploads it to a GCS bucket. And where the uh, data log processors uh, uh, periodically load that uh, schema every now and then to update itself with the new set of schemas. So then let's let's go to the log replication. So as I said, uh, we have a separate log pipeline for every data center. And uh, but for the end for the end consumer, they want the data to be aggregated for a particular hour boundary across all data centers. Uh, take an example of ad impression. They let's say user uh, uh, multiple uh, the, uh, users are using uh, sending these events from all data centers. But from the backend jobs to run, they want the data to be available at, uh, aggregated from all data centers in at hourly boundary. So the purpose of log replication is to essentially merge the data which is being generated at each log pipeline from each data center and merge it to hourly boundary. So this is this log replication in this slide that I'm explaining is a batch log replication uh, where uh, we uh, as and when the data is generated by the log pipeline at each data center, we merge them and generate to HDFS or GCS. Uh, then I have another slide to talk about how we do uh, the log replication for streaming users. Um, that's at a high level about log replication. And let me just give a little bit details about how we deploy our uh, log pipeline. Uh, so to enable better security and uh, better chargeback mechanism, uh, we have uh, all the GCP deployments are deployed are uh, mult are divided into multiple GCP projects uh, inside Twitter. So uh, what we did is to deploy this log pipeline for each project independently, and we manage all those deployments. Uh, but they are contained within that project. So this uh, this uh, 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 deployment happens uh, like if when you configure a new log category, which particular log pipeline has to take care of your log category is something provision uh, handled at the provisioning time. So when you provision a lock category, we look at the lock category and based on the service account owner, <clears throat> you can map the lock category to a corresponding <clears throat> GCP project. And once that is done, we create associated GCP resources. I'm sorry, uh, let's take some water. <clears throat> and uh, uh, yeah, we create a bunch of uh, GCP resources after at the provisioning time, for example, creating pubs up topics and uh, uh, GCS buckets, uh, BQ data sets and creating the schema for those tables. They're all automatically done at the time of provisioning time. We use Terraform uh, for this purpose uh, through our internal uh, Twitter uh, service called Demigod service. And also at, at this is the point in time where we configure the event routing as well, like how the data to be delivered from a particular application to a particular uh, sync. I'll explain more about routing in set of uh, next set of slides, but uh, uh, the routing capability is essentially taken care at the provisioning time, and also the access control aspects of the lock categories also done uh, during the provisioning time. Where, in general, all these lock categories have right access uh, uh, will have a right access only to the log, log processors, and whereas read access is to be given to a service account owners, the user users of the lock category. So I, that's at a high level about individual components of uh, log pipeline. Um, I'll just uh, have one more slide about uh, how we stream data between two data centers, uh, especially uh, between Twitter environment and cloud log pipeline, which is in GCP. Uh, so uh, to 
to solve this problem, we need to um, handle uh, two different. Uh, um, uh, we need to solve two different problems. First one is how do we do? How do we handle connectivity between Twitter data center and GCP? And the second one is how do we forward the events? The first one is we have a dedicated network bandwidth uh, 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 provision between Twitter data center and GCP uh, to handle the data in a streaming way and batch way. Uh, so we provision a separate uh, network bandwidth for the log categories, and uh, we deploy a Flume aggregation layer uh, a, with a uh, with a dedicated uh, connectivity to GCP. So if you have an application, if we have an application that uh, is scribing data or publishing data from Twitter applications sitting in Twitter data center, but the data to be available in a streaming way to uh, BigQuery, uh, users uh, scribe the data as usual. They don't really know that how the routing is happening. They go through the client library, client library forwards it to the Flume aggregation layer. The Flume aggregation layer knows that this particular uh, log category has to be um, um, written to PubSub. Uh, so it will does the routing aspect of forwarding those events to PubSub while preserving all the headers that are added by the client library or at the Flume aggregation layer. So, and once it is in GCP PubSub, our cloud log pipeline will take care of flushing it to uh, publishing that data to BigQuery or cloud storage. So I have a final slide that talks about uh, how these two log pipelines together fit inside Twitter and uh, uh, how the data uh, can be routed through different workflows. There are many possibilities of data uh, routing, but uh, before going to the routing, I want to uh, just segregate two log pipelines that we have in place. All yellow boxes are essentially uh, Twitter on-prem data center deployments uh, that's, uh, that serves both uh, uh, batch and streaming. And the gray box uh, are from GCP environment, which are deployed, which serves both uh, uh, both streaming and batching workloads. So uh, the, the possible routing, let me explain a couple of cases. Uh, if user wants to do streaming workload, and uh, uh, the streaming workload uh, can come from uh, an application deployed in the GCP environment, then the events are traveling from uh, client library to GCP PubSub through BigQuery. Uh, or if the if the application is write, uh, writing data from uh, Twitter data center, it goes through client library and Flume aggregation layer forwards the data to PubSub, and then it goes to the BigQuery. If it is a batch workflow, then again, you have two choices. Uh, if, if the application is deployed in the cloud, it goes through client library to PubSub to GCS. Uh, if the data itself is uh, deployed uh, in the on-prem data center, then the data goes through on-prem log pipeline, which is a client library to uh, Flume aggregation layer to HDFS. And between HDFS and GCS, we have a log replication service to copy data continuously. That's at a high level about possible routing. And as I mentioned, all the routing uh, aspects are uh, taken care uh, at the time of provisioning a log category where user specifies, this is my log data. I'm scribing from these data centers. I want data to be available in PubSub, uh, sorry, in uh, GCS, HDFS, BigQuery, or Druid. To conclude, uh, we embrace a hybrid cloud environment and provide unified experience to publish log categories. Uh, doesn't matter how uh, the applications are deployed within the Twitter, whether they are deployed uh, at on-prem data center or cloud, they'll see a unified experience with respect to using the log pipeline. And with respect to log pipeline itself, is a global scale log delivery mechanism, which does a bunch of things. First one is to aggregate data between the data centers and provide modes of multiple modes of delivery, which is streaming and batching, and also support various sync options. For example, BigQuery or Druid or GCS, so the user can configure them. All these properties, routing and uh, uh, type of delivery and type of syncs are configured at the uh, provisioning time. Uh, with that, um, we are happy to take questions on this stuff. I guess people could type their questions in the channel. If yeah, in the chat box, yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I, I saw one question. Any trouble with scaling from? Yes. Uh, we, um, so so first uh, we take uh, architecture, you know, uh, the flumes, uh, they are independent. They don't interact with each other. And it's a uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's function just receive data and write to HDFS, uh, you know, so we could scale high round, uh, scale, you know, the high round degree. But for the flume itself, we do see some problem. We see some memory issue. We see some memory uh, and, and some bugs like the memory leak bugs. So we done uh, many improvements. For example, we include a micro batch to HDFS sync. I guess after that patch, uh, the performance had increased uh, uh, 10 times or something like that. And we also increase, uh, introduce a new memory model called memory channel group. So basically the memory inside the channel group, they could share the, the resource. Um, but the between the groups is totally you know, uh, isolated. Uh, from this, we could uh, you know, greatly improve our utilization of memory because you know, we have thousands of, um, uh, uh, thousands of six, hundreds of uh, uh, categories. Yeah, and I, we also you know, added some feature like a limit the max throughput uh, one category could uh, take. Uh, so this could help us control the bus radius. We also introduce a concept called an aggregate group. So basically we group all the files of small files or smaller categories together. So in this case, at a risk scale, we wouldn't uh, you know, cause too many problems to HDFS because of uh, you know, small files from number. Yeah, we also done lots of tuning like uh, the flash frequency. Yeah, so uh, yeah, in Flume, we also have a thing, uh, thing to Kafka. And for that, we also see some ACO, like uh, a, a better slow partition to Kafka. We also add our own partition. Uh, lots of things uh, we have done to improve Flume. Yeah, we, we didn't uh, cover the uh, Flume aspects more in this talk. Uh, but uh, 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 apart from uh, what Ginger mentioned, we uh, even to support the Streaming to PubSub, we added our own uh, uh, PubSub sync uh, for Plume as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we you know um, we also did some configuration to plan our Plume as well, like we introduced con a tier concept. You know, just to make the from uh, across different tier total isolated, but in the same tier we register to the same zookeeper class to make it available to all the tiers. You know, it's um, yeah. So, so to summarize, you know, we did a lot. We introduced new features, the fact fixes, and uh, uh, work together with the overall configuration to make it a more scalable, to make it to be able to handle the. It, the data has a data scale, you know, like uh, it could be up more than four trillion events per day. Yeah. So, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, there, there is more work going on also uh, uh, between the uh, streaming aspect of how we stream data between Kafka and uh, uh, PubSub. Uh, there, we, we haven't talked about those things, but uh, as Ginger mentioned, that involves a bunch of changes in the flume about how to provide a lossless delivery between Kafka to PubSub. Uh, which is still in work, so uh, we couldn't talk about those. Yeah, I guess that's a good call. Yeah, that's also another important feature. So, yeah. Yeah, basically, we make a, you know, from a support transaction between source and channel and things, but it's, uh, there's, you know, no, 
uh, you know, uh, what we have done is, you know, it, it is possible the data is only in channel, not in sync, and we act back to users. So we develop a new feature. So make sure we only act back to you to the clients. Only the data is uh, is confirmed by the thing. You know, so more like I am to the delivery guarantee. You know, something like that. And yeah, essentially providing a transactional guarantee while moving data from one streaming system to another streaming system. Yeah. Yeah, if people are interested, you, you could reach out to us. <laughs> we could tell more. All right, I guess the time is uh, the part. Okay, so if no question, I guess uh, that's it. it. And then we can end the session. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining this session. Um, please reach out to us if any questions. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, have a good one.